you have done this show called In the Know, and you did it with Mike Judge. Yeah. Uh, and it is really funny and really well done. And I think you've made six of them. Is yeah, that right? There's six. Yeah. Okay. I watched the first one uh, before you got here, and I was like, oh, I'm totally down with this show. <laughs> it takes place at NPR, and this is going to reel you in. It's NPR. Uh, Zach is the main character who's completely full of himself, named Lauren. Yeah, Lauren Caspian. Lauren Caspian, who is the, I think, third or fourth most popular uh, uh, NPR correspondent. Probably fourth, but claims third. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, it's puppets. It's, it's like, I want to almost- Stop motion, right? Stop yeah. motion yeah. puppets. And it's really funny. It's, it's so well-written. And it's it's so good, and of course, it's skewering a lot of the stuff that <laughs> that I think needs skewering. Uh, I mean, so many things need skewering uh, on 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 both sides of the spectrum. But it is so funny. I was watching it. I was thinking, this makes me really happy. But one of the parts that I really like is that your character uh, in his interviews, the interviews are on Zoom, so it's all puppets. But then when you're talking to whoever one of your guests are, it's really them on a Zoom. <sighs> And so uh, Kaya Gerber happened to be in, in yeah, her episode. Yeah, she was great and very game. I mean, it's interesting. Like, I've never done stop motion before, but it's the people who did the Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio. So these, mm -hmm. are, these are like the best stop motion animators in the world. And it's crazy to see it because one thing I didn't realize when we started, but I, I, I guess I feel like... Um, you know, people have a tendency to kind of winnow themselves down to one thing or, or to winnow each other down to one thing to kind of, this kind of reductive identity thing where it's like you are this one thing or you're this one thing you did or one thing you believe, right, et cetera. Right. And so something that I always look for in stories and try to include is the kind of contradictory bird's nest of a person, you know. And one thing that's so cool about stop motion is because each character is played by 30 different animators plus the voice actor. There's a kind of uh, multifacetedness that's bred into the process. You yes. get all of these different people's little ticks and imaginations and facial features and stuff in, 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 the, in the process. I thought that was really fun. I'd never experienced that before. Also, it was also created by the, uh, Brandon Gardner, who's my writing partner and who listens to this show religiously. Well, so. I thought Brandon Gardner was really the driving force behind it. Okay, well, let's not, you know, <laughs> no. let's not get carried away because I <laughs> clearly... No, no, he yeah. just felt like... He's, he's an the, amazing <laughs> human being. Yeah, no, he's well, the, you guys he's have... like a giant, powerful Evan Rude motor shooting the boat forward. <laughs> yeah. And then you and Mike Judge have like little tiny straws that you're dipping in the water okay. to try and help But he's also forward. a great guy, though. Oh, just, like, I love him. He's a great guy. I love and him. guess what? He knows a podcast when he hears it. Yes. yes. Okay, well, I mean, I don't think we're just like a pointless ancillary rowing team on the back of his... <laughs> This catamaran. No, I, I think mean, you're a, you guys are attractive appendages on please. a powerful, <laughs> powerful engine that is, what's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, one of the things that, that it's a, it's an, it's, it's something that I'm really looking forward to seeing more in the show is you and one of your coworkers are always trying to out woke and out PC each other. And it makes for really good comedy because nice. you, <laughs> you will be saying, well, there's an unhoused person I'm and, and everyone's very sanctimonious. And then she's accusing you of being insensitive because you didn't use the latest term. And I thought, oh, this is this is this is comedy that needs to be done right now. Well, you know, it's funny in the neighborhood where we're recording this, uh, I guess a couple of years ago, I was walking around and it's kind of like a Tony neighborhood. And I was I passed a house that probably must cost like four million dollars or something. And in the front yard, there was a sign that said defund the police. And then right next to it was an ADT home security decal <laughs> that advertised that they have armed guards who are on patrols. And I was like, defund the police because you have like hired mercenaries who are like, yeah. and I was like. With shoot to kill order. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then I felt very smug about it. And then I went to go get them tiger and ordered like a whatever, $19 <laughs> matcha and was like my own hellish version of the same person I was just looking down on. So I just think there's like so much. Sorry, I'm spitting. There's so much like, you know, I, 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 the kind of cosmetic progressive ideology where it's like it's a 
it's a personal enhancement as opposed to a commitment that you're making to action. You know, it's it's yeah. a way of of beautifying yourself, but you never really walk the walk. I mean, I think about that all the time of like how if you look at my credit card statements and you were to look at my journal entries, there's a terrible disparity between <laughs> what I supposedly care about and what I swipe my my card on. Sure, you know? sure. I think we all have that. I, th- I thought uh, the show... Um, the curse. Have you guys watched the curse at all? Um, and it's uh, with uh, Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Stone. Emma Stone. And I thought they did a really good job too of picking apart this. Look at us. We are we are pure, and and we are the saviors, and we are here to right the wrongs. And uh, there was. Great uncomfortable comedy about that. Yeah. Um, but I, I I just was watching this show and I thought, this is very original. I love that it's this mixed media form and uh, I'm down down for more of these. Thanks, Are, Is there a plan? Is, is the plan to make more than one season? You're going to wait and see. Yeah, I guess it depends if they if the network wants to make more. And But we've, we've been daydreaming about it. I mean, at this point, we're just trying to kind of get it out into the world and that's been preoccupying. But... I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. Well, that's a boring answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a Help terrible, you terrible guys are, answer. You can we guys get your comedy? In here? Can I do something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, I'm going to text Brandon. Let's, let's, yeah, Brandon let's talk about Brandon more. <laughs> can I just say something? This was intended to be an interview with Brandon. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but he is so in demand. <laughs> we couldn't get him. Yeah. yeah. Damn it, Brandon. And uh, there was just no getting him. So he's, uh, I guess, on some party with Kaya Gerber and Sia and everyone else who's <laughs> named. Sia. Yeah. yeah. That's a cool party. It's just the three of them. <laughs> yeah, just the three of them, and it's in a very large cheesecake factory <laughs> that they bought out, and it's just it's oh, empty. Oh man, I want to go. I yeah, love the cheesecake factory. They have so many choices. I really I, do. Can I tell you though? I made a reservation at the cheesecake factory once. I showed up, and they were like, "the the way is forty five minutes." Yeah. I was like, "Oh no, no, I have a reservation." And she said, "No, no, that's just uh, that's just an estimate." What? I was like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. So the reservations at Cheesecake Factory are a lie and a fraud. You have hey, can to we get always that? wait. Let's get that word out. We oh. Wait a minute. Well, well, I, I have a confession. What? what? My uh, stepbrother is a regional manager for... Is that true? Cheese, yeah, Cheesecake Factory. I haven't okay. ever brought in cheesecakes. Uh, as a, he lives in Dallas. God. Yeah, they I would, hate they would melt on the way. <laughs> I, think, I don't think he works for them anymore, but... Good. Yeah. <laughs> No, we're not picking a fight with Cheesecake I'm Factory. I'm telling you. I'm Big the Bob cheesecake. Woodward of the f- <laughs> Cheesecake Factory. You know I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to be on Zach's side for a second. I think if you tell people you've got a reservation, you've got to honor that. Of course. Now, look, I respect that Cheesecake Factory, I've never seen a menu like that. Yeah. It's a menu where you think of something in your head. If it's not on that menu, I'll blow my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, uh... Uh, an alarm clock covered in caramel <laughs> that sits on a blintz, and then there's a bolognese sauce. Page 17. <laughs> I'd like the Calm buffalo four. wings and a better relationship with my father, please. <laughs> That's page 9 and page 32. <laughs> I once asked him if it was possible if I came in and theoretically ordered one of everything on the menu, could you even produce that much food in enough time? And they said that they could. I don't know if this, do you think that's true? They have true? a 3D printer back there and they just, <laughs> they're, they're just constantly, <laughs> and giant pneumatic tubes firing foods from all around the world at hyperspeed. 